Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. And so today, if it's your first time, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand. I think I'm short like 80 subs to get to 1K. So don't forget to like leave a comment, leave a question if you have one, and you know give the video a like. That way, the algorithm starts pushing it through. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about it. the title is called "The Bad Side of Dating in Medellin." Uh, as some of you might know, uh, an American was recently drugged here. A guy that was an experienced traveler, and he uh, he passed away unfortunately. Me, but from what I'm hearing. You know, I don't know too much details, but from what I'm hearing, this wasn't the first time he had got drugged. So, I mean, I don't even know what to say, if I could be honest. I just think, you know, it's, it's it doesn't matter if you've been here for 10 years or this is your first time. You have to be careful and you have to use common sense. Uh, some of the girls that I see sometimes that do the druggings, I'm just looking at the pictures of them and I'm just like, bro, this girl looks like the type that she would do something like that. So that's what happens sometimes when you mess with bottom feeders and stuff, you know? And that's why I tell guys here, like, Medellin could be like paradise, but it also could be hell if you don't watch out for yourself, you know? You don't have discipline to, you know, take care of yourself. And, you know, it's common sense to take your drink with you. Like, if I go on a date, I take my drink with me at all times. Like, and first of all, the girls here never buy a guy a drink. So if she does that, that's already a red flag. Fuck that. And shit, girls here never buy guys drinks and shit. So yeah, no, and shit. So I mean, there's a lot of good things about Medellin, but there's also like some bad things. You know, I, I like to talk about the positive along with the negatives. I try to be unbiased as, as much as I can as possible. But you got a lot of drugings that are going on. This actually has been going on for a few years. And when I first got here, like four years ago, I think the first month, two Americans had got drugged or something, two foreigners, I believe, and one had passed away, I think. And then I think last year there was two young black guys that were showing off their money on WhatsApp or I don't know what they're showing off their money, but they, they did a home evasion on them and they robbed them and stuff like that. But they're showing off their money here in Medellin. And so, yeah, don't do that, you know. Don't be wearing jewelry. And, you know, you, I seen sometimes the comments that some people leave, like, you know what, I'll wear it or whatever. Like, fuck it, you know. You don't care about your life. That's on you and shit. But, yeah, the people, the Colombians here don't give a shit about the jewelry stuff and shit. All they care about is, you know, if you dress, you know, decent, you know, don't dress ridiculous. You don't have to wear no Jordans, nothing expensive, you know. You can wear something that's nice, you know, but don't go over-exaggerating, you know, because people are... In Porado, that's where, like, most of the Americans and tourists are at. Guess where the robbers are going at? They're not staying in San Javier. They're not staying in Bello. They're going to go eat. They're going to go eat where the money's at. Where's the money at? Where the gringos are at. And some people say tourists go to La Sententa, but not really. I go there a lot, and you hardly ever see any Americans or tourists there. So, I, I nah, don't... There might be a few, but not really. Like, everybody goes to Parado because that's where all, like, the nice, like, uh, apartments and stuff like that are at. Really nice apartments. The best apartments, actually, in uh, Medellin are in Parado. So that's what it's known for. The condos and, you know, all the sky views and the nice whole uh, swimming pools and jacuzzis and all that good stuff. So with that being said, some of the bad things are, like, some of the girls here are interested. So you do have to be careful. That there's This is what people have to understand. There, the Pablo Escobar culture is here. And Medellin, that's what it's known for. The culture of getting the plata, getting the money no matter what, forget about my values. That that culture is here. And not everybody is doing it, right? But there are some girls and some men that are doing it, you know. They do whatever they have to to get some money. So you do have to be aware of that, you know. Uh, if you lean with your wallet, like I did when I first got here, you're gonna you're gonna think you have friends here and you'll be like, oh, I stopped drinking already and they don't even want to go out with me no more. And so you start to learn like, you know, how to move around, you know, you're going to make mistakes, but that's a part of life, you know, you grow up and you like, you become a wiser person. But there's a great expat community here in Medellin. There's a lot of groups that you can hang out with, watch football or do foreign language exchanges, or you could go to the dance clubs or whatever, uh, dancing lessons. And you can meet people that I've seen some guys do that. They go do the bachata, salsa lessons, and there's like a lot of local women. And that's a great way to meet, you know, people here. But I say the best way, honestly, to meet the, the best women here, like the ones that have the careers and stuff like that, is always in the streets. Like you're not, they're not really gonna be on Tinder. They're not really, they're not gonna be in the clubs. That's for sure. And so yeah, you mess with bottom feeders, you're gonna get bad results. And I kind of did that when I first got here as well. So, you know, I'm talking about myself and I'm talking about friends as well. So what are some of the bad things? You know, uh, I had this one friend that came over here recently. And I told him to watch out for this one girl. I was like, look, be careful. You know, she's definitely an interested girl. You know, she's looking for, you know, like free meals, like expensive places. Because she told me, oh, take me to over here. And it was like one of the most expensive places in Medellin, which is a nice place. It's my favorite place. But you're dropping at minimum at least $100. And I'm like, dude, you're not even my friend. Like, why the hell am I going to take you there? 
And I told this guy, be careful with this girl, you know, like, don't, you know, take her here. Nah, I'll, I'm going to just take her to a regular bar. And I was like, don't even hang out with her, bro. Like, she's just wasting your time. And he told me, no, nah, no, nah, you worry too much. You know, like, you pay too much attention. And I was like, All right, whatever, bro. I just let it go like that. Whatever. And then I came back here, and he was here this time. He came back at the same time as I did. And the same girl asked him to take him to that same place. And he was like, no, nah, I'm going to just chill here at the bar. And then the next day, he hit her up, and the girl's like, oh, I'm sick. And I was like, bro, I told you. I was like, stop messing with bottom feeders and shit, man. And shit, you know. And so, you know. And then I knew another guy here. And I talked about this in other videos on my channel. Like, this one older dude. And the girl wasn't even a young girl. She was like in her 40s. And talking about, she's a good girl. I'm going to take her to Mexico, to Cancun, and all this other stuff. And when I was behind her, I could see her on WhatsApp texting another guy. I miss you, papi. There you go. And you know, and I saw another guy take a girl to Cancun, spend three thousand, and she never. That's the thing, bro. If you take a girl to vacation, puta caña, Cancun, anywhere, and she and she doesn't even bother to take one picture with you and post it on the social media, bro. That speaks volumes. I don't care what you say. I was like, that says that girl's talking to other guys, and she doesn't want to mess up the game with the other guys. And so, bro, she's just using you, bro. That's what I'm talking about. This is why I made this video. I've talked about it before, but I wanted to address it because you know the drugs are happening a lot here and it doesn't matter you've been here for 10 years or this is your first time you have to be careful how you move here you know you have to use common sense and it's always good to go with a group of expats you know never go out by yourself you know and this is your first time you know you can meet people here that can show you how to move you know and you can meet locals as well you know but you have to be careful with some of the some of the girls here because like I'm talking about girls that I'm not even dating like girls that I met I thought were my friends but as soon as I took alcohol and uh Three meals away, crickets when I came back. They didn't even hit me up and shit, you know. So it goes to show you how some people are here and shit, you know. I had this one girl, this two girls and shit, put, make a group on WhatsApp group called um, Our Presence. And I like one of them, oh, can you buy me a, a, the pack of the bottles? And it's kind of come out to almost like $100. And I'm like, what? I'm like, this girl has a boyfriend and she's asking me to buy her uh, bottles of rum for her birthday. And I'm like, nah. I told her no. And guess what? As soon as I said no, I haven't heard from her since uh, that day, and I was like nine, eight months ago, and I came back, been here for like a month already, haven't heard nothing, she knows that I'm here, she sees me on the social media, and didn't even say happy birthday or nothing, they didn't say, hey, you know what, you know, like, that's another thing that I, I tell you guys, you have to learn how to value yourself, you're also the prize, you know, you're also the prize, especially you're paying for everything, man, hell no, you make the rules, I had a girl the other day that was like, oh, let's go out. And I was like, well, where do you want to go? Let's go have some beers. I want to get to know you. Oh, no, I want to go eat. And I was like, well, if you're hungry, you could come to my apartment. I could order some food. Oh, no, thank you. But when you want to go eat, hit me up. She just wanted a free meal, and that's it. And she wanted me to pay for her Uber. And I, I raised her number. Like, nah, bro. That's why I'm telling you guys, like, you know, be, you don't have to do expensive shit, man. You could be like, you know what? Um, let's go over here and drink some beers. Or, you know, let's go over here to, like, you know... Uh, the mall or something and say, you know let's have a cup of coffee let's go to Starbucks I want to get to know you you are the prize as well and you could be like oh you know what let's go to the gym you could do uh, let's go to over here like let's go bowling you could do things that don't involve alcohol as well and you could get to know the girl you, you could spend minimum money and stuff and I want to talk about like I've been talking to a lot of the Uber drivers and I asked them like you know how much do you spend on dates here $25 a hundred mean a hundred thousand pesos here is about $20 Every, like, and it's funny because I was talking to a lot of Uber drivers about five or six and I'm gonna also do interviews with these guys if they let me or I'm not at least have their audio so you could hear from themselves what they think about us the men here and they didn't think about us and everything they said was facts 100% like one guy I told him was like how the hell do these girls afford plastic because there's a lot of girls here that do have plastic and he was like you know what y'all are the ones that pay for it because we don't have that kind of money I don't the average salary is $300 you think we have thousands of dollars for that shit I was like no you're right I was like, you know what, you're right. And shit, the gringos, that's what he said, the gringos, y'all are responsible. And he's like, you're the ones that spend $100 on taking these girls out. We spend $25. You think guys from the Barrios are spending two or $300 a night with these girls? Absolutely not. So there you go. There you go, man. And you know, there's that, that, like I said, the Pablo culture, Escobar culture here, with money, it's like number one and stuff like that. Resilience to a lot of the young girls and stuff like that. They're about, you know, getting with the guy that has the most money, getting with the guy that it doesn't matter if he's like doing bad things or whatever, as long as he has money. So that culture is here and you have to be careful with that. You don't want to go out and meet girls that are just interested in what you got. You have to like watch out 
for what you're doing and how you move. I talk about this in other videos. I don't want to repeat it again, but I just felt like I should uh, do a response video because of what happened because I'm seeing it happen a lot. And I've seen people that want to come here and they tell me like, hey, you know what's going on over here, you know? So I'm not going to sugarcoat anything and be like, oh, it's safe. Like, it could be dangerous if you move wrong, man. But I also like the local spots. I like Adonis. I like San Javier. La Sagenta. I don't have to worry about no bad shit happening over there because you know what? The people that are doing the bad things, they go to Provado. And, you know, some guy, one of my friends told me today, he's like, oh, well, I have security. I have security if I bring a girl. Bro, there's a YouTuber that was talking about how he got drugged and the security stopped the girl. They called the police and he still didn't get his shit back and he was passed out and they let the girls go. There's no justice in Colombia for us, man. There isn't, not even for the locals. Like, I went out with a girl one time. They snatched her cell phone without us even knowing. We went to the precinct and this happened in Porrado. They had like 15 guys on the floor uh, arrested and a table full of cell phones that were stolen and they were gonna let them go in a few hours. Man, trust me, and man, unless you're dead, they're not gonna take you to jail and shit, you know? They're not gonna take those girls to jail and shit, you know? They see that you're still alive and stuff like that, they let them go, that's ridiculous. That would never happen in the States, man. Like, and so that's, that's the way the corruption is in Latin America, not just here. So that excuse that I have security watching my back, guess what, if the police don't give a shit, what do you think the security gonna do? The security gonna put the handcuffs on the girl and take them to the precinct to go see the judge? Fuck no, and shit. So get that out of there the way that, oh, you could protect yourself with the security, yes, but don't expect justice to be done, all right? So if you go with that mentality like, oh, I could hire security or whatever, and, and the apartment or whatever, you know, they took the, the ID, like, these girls don't care. There's girls that come out on video all the time robbing dudes. They don't care because there's no consequences. You literally got girls walking out of so many videos that I've seen with backpacks with shit on their fucking backpack, and they're like this, chilling like this. Going like this to the camera, they don't give a fuck, bro. They know there's nothing gonna be done to them unless the guy dies, and then they're gonna get prosecuted and shit for sure, but, and then that's the thing that we're only hearing about some of the guys that is happening to because there's a lot of guys that are professionals that have careers that are married and they don't want their people back home to find out. So imagine all the guys that this is happening to. I know two people already that have been drugged and shit. One guy got drugged in a club and he almost died. He stayed at my friend stayed in the hospital for almost four days and he was telling me how there was other gringos in the, in the ER as well that had got drugged. So this is going on a lot. And he made a rookie mistake and it's fine, you know. And another guy, I know they robbed him. They took about $20,000 out of his bank account. 20K. 20,000, that's right. And he doesn't even know how it happened. Like, I mean, it's just one of those things, you know. But, so it's good to like, learn your Spanish and learn the culture, man. You could talk to the Uber drivers and you go ask them questions like, hey, how much money do you spend on the date? What should I watch out for? And the, I had a Uber driver the other day tell me, I don't even go to Parvalo, it's dangerous. And she, I live in one of the worst neighborhoods in Medellin, but I'm more afraid of Provado than I am. And I was just like, okay. And she's like, I don't, I don't go to there. And I was like, all right. So, you know, move like the locals, man. Move like the locals, man. And she, I'm not pocket watching either, you know, but it's just like, it's just the evidence is there. You see girls on camera with their backpacks and they're just chilling, like taking selfies and like, you know, they're gonna eat dinner there and then they're gonna take off like in one hour because they thought they're not gonna do nothing. And wow. the same thing with the criminals here, like they catch them, they they have them like in the in the in the ground or whatever for a little bit, for a few hours, and they let them go. So that that excuse of oh I have security, just throw that out the window. You could have it to protect yourself, just in case you know, like they could take you to the hospital if they catch it real quick. But one red flag I would say, one important thing, number one rule, is if you go out with a girl, never let her bring a friend. Always said the girl wants to bring a friend, that's a red flag. I had a girl the other day that was oh, can my friend come? I was like, nah, nah, I'm good, bro. Your friend stays home, fuck that. And shit, bro, because all these drug are happening by like, two or three or more girls. And shit, you know? So, you know, you got guys that might say like, oh, you know, I have around like 20 girls, but how many of those girls are really your friends? If it's something like your birthday and she doesn't even take you to go get a pina colada or a Coca-Cola or the plate of the day, which is like not even $4 here, which they can't afford, you know, and they can't even do something simple like that. Is that really your friend? So that's why I told these guys, like I had one friend take these three girls to the club, spend over two or three hundred dollars, and within two hours they're making out with local Colombians. These local Colombians didn't spend one fucking dollar on these girls, and this gringo spent three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or whatever, and they went home with those guys. Move like the locals, okay? These guys didn't spend shit, and they took these girls like this, and shit, bro. 
So that's why I'm telling you, like, and I see guys sometimes take girls to sign a dress, and I'm just like, nah, bro. And you can have your fun, you know, like, you want to, you know. I'm not saying not to do it, but, like, don't expect loyalty. Don't expect them to, like, treat you any more different, like, you know. Because, you know, if the girl's interested, the girl's interested. And there's a lot of biases that are known for that. I've had girls themselves tell me, like, yeah, a lot of the girls are like that here. So you have to be careful. I've always said if you want something serious, a serious relationship, you're better off going to Bogota, Cali, you know, Barinque, any other city but here. But I understand Medellin is great, you know, great weather, people are nice. Maybe the food's not all that, but you know, there's still some great restaurants. It's cheap living, or you could even get a nice like place in Colorado. But like, if you move wrong, then you know, you're setting yourself up for failure. And man, like, I would really want to do those interviews with those, like, you know, the local men because they say some real shit and they're just telling me, like, bro, gringos are the ones paying for the plastic for these girls. Gringos are the ones popping the bottles. Gringos are the ones taking them to Mexico. Gringos are the ones taking them to San Andres. Gringos are the ones, like, they're all telling me that. I was like, we're not doing this shit. We don't got that kind of money, papi. And so I just, like, I started thinking in my head, it's like, man, move like the locals, man. Half the people that I knew here I stopped talking to because of that. I was like, you know what, bro? I move like the locals, man. If I can have only two or three good friends here, females or whatever, I'm good with that, you know? I had one girl that was a teacher that took me out to go eat and another girl that was inviting me, but she got sick and she was going to take me out to eat that weekend, but, you know, we'll go out another day or whatever, you know? But she was like, oh, you know? And so you can't meet those type of women over here, you know? And But some of these guys, you know, some of you men are messing with body of... Barrio girls, you know, and I have girls that are in the barrio that are hardworking, you know, that have, you know, goals in life, that want to do something. But there's a lot of girls that are there that are just looking for a come up and shit, you know. And so you got to ask the girl this question, what do you see yourself in five years? And sometimes they'll tell you right away, like, I had a girl tell me the day, oh, I want to be a lawyer because I like to, like, fight for people. And good, good response. Another one is just like, well, I don't know. You know, so you can meet a, a career girl in the gym, ma. You know, walking down the street, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. The people here are very receptive, very open. You could talk to the girl, even if you use... Man, when I went to Brazil, I couldn't speak no Portuguese. I didn't let that language barrier stop me, so I don't want to hear that shit. I don't speak Spanish. I use Google Translate, but I, I finally start to learn Portuguese, you know, a little bit. And in Spanish, I've always had it down. But, you know, don't don't use excuses, man. Go after it, man. Be a lion. Be hungry. And you can meet some good girls here, man, you know. But put them to the test, you know. Don't go taking them to Las Chulas and spending $400 the first night. Because then the girl's going to see, oh, you know what, let me invite my friends. Like, so, and, and Colombian men, to be fair, they do invite girls out and they do bust bottles. But it's, like, very basic. Like, a bottle here of rum is, like, $40 or something at the club. La Setenta is cheap, you know. And they'll get a bottle of rum and they drink that with little cups of plastic. And they drink agua diente and you know they're they're happy with that you know and so you have to move how the locals move you know and i think once you learn that you'll be all right you know i didn't want to make this video like a rap video but i just can't help it like you know hearing what happened and hearing how you know it wasn't the first time and i'm just like i mean i try to help people as much as i can you know like if you have any questions just leave it in the comments or you know dm me on ig you know i'll put my ig on here too and uh I just want to make things clear, like Medellin is a great place and you can meet a good girl here, but you're going to have to work on it, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, you just have to ask those questions, you know, like when you go out with these girls, you know, but if you want to show off your money and you're not interested in that, you know, I understand, you know, some guys only have one week and they don't got that kind of fucking time, so I completely understand, man, but if you want to stay here long term. And I, you see other YouTubers talk about it too. Mara talked about it. It's like, you can't come here in one month and, and, and make the, the love of your life. It's not going to happen. And he even says it himself that Bogota is better for dating. That he's had girls buy them dinner over there in Bogota. The girls are more career oriented. Over here, they're about the nightlife and, you know, showing off. And like, you know, like I said, that Pablo Escobar, you know, culture is very instilled in some of the young girls here. And the guys as well and stuff. So you got to be careful. There's also a lot of Venezuelans here that are here as well. And so you gotta be careful how you move and how you talk. Some of these girls are known for being players. Like the line here is really bad. It's almost like a national sport. Like I'm, there's one girl that I met. I didn't meet up with her, but she was on Tinder. And then later on I found out she was pregnant and she's like, oh, but she had told me she was single for an X amount of time, but she was still having, you know, an affair with her ex-boyfriend or whatever. He was still in her life. Or maybe he, she was always with him, I don't know. But stuff like that does happen in here. So don't believe everything they tell you the first time. I think respect is earned. It isn't fucking given. And so you, when you come over here, you know, especially if you're a veteran. And so you know how sometimes we have a lot of loyalty. I was like, don't give that loyalty to somebody that you just barely met here. 
and say get to know them let them let them see what they do for you if it's your birthday and they don't like they don't even invite you to a pina colada bro and they know it's your birthday like the girls that i knew i thought were my friends guess what even one of them told me because she wanted to go out but after the second time i went out with her, i was like nah you could tell she was just interested in, and the third time she got pissed off and she told me oh we only went out with you because of uh you're buying us drinks and I'm like that's cool but i'm not going out with you no more and so fucking you know the truth came out from that girl so that's what i'm telling you and she, you might think that the girls are down for you but i was like but it's my fault because the way i was moving was incorrect and she, so don't make the mistakes that i've made but that i see my friends make they make all the time still they don't learn and you know i mean it's just i just think some guys here are very reckless extremely reckless and how they move here and you know i knew one guy you know that was like this man i don't want to i don't want to say anything you know but i just seen some stories here where just like why would you mess with that girl you know you're talking about a girl that's like obviously from the barrio obviously doesn't have nothing positive going on with her and it's just like it's like a game for some guys it's just like yeah you know like i got up you know i got these girls so you got these these guys that are just you know like you know, oh, you know, I got these girls or whatever. But at the end of the day, I tell them the truth. You know, I'm not afraid to tell, be honest. You know, I'm just like, okay, when was the last time you went to the park and drank some juice or you went to the museum or you went bowling or you went to go watch a movie with these girls? Because if it's all clubs and it's all fancy dinners and those are not your friends. And shit, I'm sorry, but those girls will take advantage of you. Let Other countries are different. Like maybe like in... DR the girls are gonna ask you for three hundred dollars over here. They're not gonna ask you for that But they'll get like a free meal and you know a dinner and expensive shit like that, you know And you know sometimes, you know, you're gonna have girls that try you like I have one girl that asked me one time For for X amount of money and I was like, okay, I'll go with you to the store I have no issue and I'll buy the groceries. She started tripping and we got into an argument and she was like Oh, well, you know this and this and this and that was the end of the friendship and so, yeah, you know, you can't be afraid to tell a girl, no, that's bullshit. Actually, one of the first girls I met here four years ago tried me. She's like, oh, you know, I'm sick. I need to go to the pharmacy. And I was like, okay, I'll go and buy the medicine. And guess what? Why do you want to come? And like, why do you want to? And like, bro, I just came from DR. I know how these tricks work. Like, oh, I, I need to go to the, I need to buy medicine. I need to buy some groceries. And I was like, okay, I'll go with you. What's the issue? No, no, no. Well, you know what? I'm not going to see you. It's like, fine with me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know? And that's what... You guys come over here and you act like you've never seen a beautiful woman in your life. And you're just like this. Like, Don't let that pretty face fool you, man. Because that pretty face can be a devil underneath, man. And so you got to learn how to amass these women. You got to test these women, man. But like, you know what? I don't got a lot of money. And so let's go over here. Like, I had another girl too the other day. It was like, oh, inviting me to the club. I would never go to the club on the first date anyways. And I was just like, you know what? I told her straight up, I only got my money for three beers. Guess what? She didn't even reply back. You tell me. And shit, bro. But some of you guys that come over here are just like, ah, $10 isn't nothing. $20 isn't nothing. $50. Like, bro, it doesn't matter, bro. Even if it's like when I was going out with these girls, I thought were my friend, I didn't, I didn't even go past the $60 or $70 mark. Because it's so cheap. I would go drink at local places, not Povado, where it's expensive. And guess what? When I came back and they found out that I wasn't going to you know, spend that money on them, they stopped hitting me up. And it's a reality. And at the end of the day, I have myself to blame because I was leaning with the wallet. And my friend told me that it's like a girl will get as far as a guy lets him. i let her and shit. I'm sorry. And so, yeah, man. You come over here. Don't leave with your wallet. Leave with this right here, your mind and shit, dude. And don't be afraid to go to the, you know, expat pages and ask questions. That's what they're there for. Like, hey, you know, I have a date with this girl, but she wants to bring a friend. And I think every guy's going to tell you that. There's, there's even pages that talk about the druggings that are going on, dedicated, you know. And so don't be afraid to ask questions. Like, hey, you know, this girl wants to go out and, so, and you know. It's usually, especially the older men, you know, you have to be like, watch what you do. If you're going out with a young girl, you know, try to go out with somebody that can have your back. And don't leave your drinks unattended, please. And no girl's ever gonna buy you a drink here. I don't care if you look like James Bond or the most good looking guy in the world. Like, that's never gonna happen. It's just not the, not the culture here, man. Not the culture. Maybe in Europe, I've had girls buy me drinks, but that's, this is not Europe, Poppy. And so, yeah, man. So. I don't want to make this video too long, but I just hope that I got to the to the point. Like I said, the most important thing is don't move with your wallet. Move how the locals move and, you know, use your common sense, man. And don't fall for the pretty face because I know you see the girl and it's like, man, this girl's a 10. I've seen girls that look like models, but they don't got shit going on for them except their looks, man. Shit. 
they just like at home not working they don't want to go to school they want to look for that dude that's going to take them out of their you know problems don't be that guy don't be that guy that's going to save save this girl you know don't be that dude man you can't meet some good girls here and shit you know but like i say you follow those rules and then oh my friend wants to come nah man you have to you're the prize you're the prize you have to think about yourself as the prize especially you're paying for everything you make the rules and go god get out of poblado guys like go to la sententa go to aranues go to buenos aires there's some good places here that your guys can go to and you can meet local women the best areas to me uh, poblado is not even a place to meet women i almost forgot about that poblado is the worst place that you could go to meet women as uh, you go to aranues good place you go to san actually when i went to san javier which is by Comina Trece, what is in Comina Trece. That place, I was dancing all night. I went to the club, and that was the only club I've been to at Medellin like a few years ago where I was dancing with a lot of girls, man. I was dancing bachata, and I was like, wow, you're never gonna get that experience, and and so what if you're the only guy, bro? It's still safer than Povado, because all the criminals are going where the money's at. Where's the where's the money at? Where are the, where are the gringos at? And she named Povado, and she, there's no, and you're gonna be the only American there, and you go with a friend, and I've had guys that tell me, I've had guys that, oh my God, man. Huh, I've had expats that tell me it's dangerous to go to San Javier. And I've gone in parties with the locals there. I feel more safer by Comina Trece than I do in Porrado. When I'm in Porrado, I have my head like this. When I'm in those areas, bro, they live by a code. The people that are in charge in there don't allow fucking robberies and shit, man. They don't allow, it's kind of like the favelas in Brazil. Like, people don't rob each other. They live by a strict code over there. They don't do that fuckery in those neighborhoods, man. Believe me when I tell you that shit, man. If you go over there with the right mind, you're going to meet more girls in San Javier and uh, Aranues, Buenos Aires, and probably one weekend that you'll do in three months in Porvalo. Because in Provence, are nothing but working girls, and, and it's an expensive area too, so a lot of the girls that go there are middle class and up. And so this is expensive, it's expensive, it's not cheap. And so that's not the place to meet locals, and that's not that's not the real Medellin. Parado's not the real Medellin, okay? It's not. So I tell you guys, if you go to Aranues, real good local neighborhoods, uh, San Javier, you'll meet some people and shit. You'll meet, you'll meet some girls. If you know how to dance, get your skills up. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you work on yourself, man, you could definitely pull here and shit. You gotta, like, you know, forget the shyness. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And so, and looks don't matter. I'm not an attractive guy. And I see, man, I wish I could show you the pictures of my girls' boyfriends. Oh my fucking God. Like, one girl is so beautiful. When I saw her, dude, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, really? But, hey man, man, you see some, and that's what I'm saying, that's what I'm telling you, I seen another guy's channel, he was talking about it, he's like, you see these guys walking around with sandals, and they're walking with a bad girl that looks like she walked out of a magazine shoot, and you guys over here trying to like flex, like you don't have to do none of that, that, that thing that you do in America, leave that shit home, man, and when you fucking come over here, bro, try to learn your Spanish, at least some basic, learn how to some dance a little bit, bachata, salsa, merengue, and get your skills up, the more you learn, the more you earn. And Shane, believe me, when you learn stuff over here before you come over here, bro, pff, you're gonna have a step ahead of all the rest of the guys. If you speak Spanish pretty good and you learn it, and you learn how to dance and shit, you go to the dancing classes here, bro. Pff, you're gonna be you're gonna be crushing it, man. But if you flee with your wallet, you could also be like falling apart like I did, you know. I thought I had friends here, and like like I said, as soon as I took that that shit out of their lives, bro, crookets. And shit, crookets, man. I could probably say that maybe I have maybe like three female friends here out of like 15 that I thought I had here and shit. It goes to show you that a lot of the girls I was hanging out with were just interested in women and shit, man. But once you meet those girls that I know that have careers and shit, like one of them was a teacher and the other one's studying, you know, university. It's good, man. You can meet those girls and like the people here are very friendly. Like one girl took me to her house and like I was meeting her. That's why I tell I told guys too. He's like one guy's like I have friends and I'm like all right, but when's the last time you went to a Colombian home? When's the last time they invited you to their house and they're like you know we're gonna cook dinner for you or something like that? Oh, it's always always the same response from the gringos. Oh, 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 come on, dog. I was like, I was like, man, dude, like. No matter how poor you think a girl is here, and I used to have that mentality, and my friend was telling me the other day, it's like, no, you can't think like that. This is like, you know, she has at least enough money to buy you a plate of the day. And if she doesn't have something like that for you for your birthday, that's not your friend. And you know what? He was right. 100% correct on that assessment. And shit, you know? And, you know, I don't move my wallet anymore. I, I don't do like the fucking dates. Like, I think take them to the gym, take them to the mall, take them to Starbucks, take them to go have a couple of beers somewhere. 
happy hour or something. You could do something basic like that. But if the girl's like, oh no, then she's not interested. And you don't waste your time and you go for another one. Another thing that many girls can be very flaky, so don't take it personal. And they don't show up the first day. Don't be getting pissed off. Like in America, it means they don't want nothing to do with you. But over here, it's just there. They have that. I don't know why they're like that. The biases are like that. They're known for being flaky. Not all of them, but that's going to happen a little bit to you. You might go, oh, she might make plans with you the whole week. And then you're getting ready. And then two hours later, you don't hear shit from her until the next day. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, it's part of the culture. And then the next day, they'll go out with you. And so I know it's, that's one thing that's really weird about Medellin, that the girls can be flaky like that. And I think guys that stay here for a while will tell you agree with me as well. They're known for being like that. Not all of them, like I said, but some of them are. They'll be like, yeah, we'll make plans. And the whole week you're like, yeah, yeah, Saturday. And in the last minute, like, oh, you know, I got something to do. Or they don't, they don't even text you until the next day. You're like, so don't lose your temper. Don't get mad. Don't say nothing bad. And just be like, just know that it's part of the culture. You have to respect the culture as well. You know? So stay away from bottom feeders. Watch how you move. Don't lean with your wallet. Ask locals the same question that I ask them, like, hey, you know, how do you move? How much money do you spend? What places do you recommend to go? What should I watch out for? Bro, they start telling me, boom, 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 bro. And you can let that knowledge sink in your head. Watch other YouTube videos that are people from here. I don't know. I think Maru hasn't done videos here in a long time, but his old videos are very great because he has, like, interviews with a bunch of girls, and I'm trying to do the same thing, too. I did one with one girl that was like a DJ and she's been in the nightlife area for four years. So I decided I don't want to just put the camera on any girl's face and be like, talk. I don't want to do that. I decided to do the interview with her because this is her life. The nightlife is her life. She's been doing it for years and she's, she's very good at it. So I wanted you guys to see something from somebody that it's around that perspective. She's around a lot of expats. And so that's why she was giving you her, her opinion and she spoke English. So if you watch that video, uh, You'll get a good perspective from a local that's been doing it for years and she speaks English so I didn't have to translate yes. And so yeah. And I don't want to make this video long. I don't like making long videos. People have things to do. And so hopefully you got something from this and hopefully all the lessons that I that I showed you here you'll apply when you come over here. Because like I said, I've seen a lot of guys get scammed like me and you're thinking, oh, she's down for me. And then you come over here and it's like, oh, I, Ulysses doesn't want to spend you know $100 on the bottles for us no more. And so yeah. And so don't be like that, you know, move like the locals move, man. And believe me, you're going to make some great people here and shit. You can, but don't expect to meet the love of your life in one month either. Like, it takes time, you know. But like I said, don't lean with your wallet and put her to the test. You know, don't give me that excuse. Oh, she only makes so much money. Believe me when I tell you, dude, like, I, I seen guys do that. I seen guys take a girl out and then they're complaining. I'm like, bro, didn't you say she spent so much money on this? But she didn't even have money to take you to dinner and you took her somewhere. What? Okay. The plate of the day is like 20,000 pesos, which is about four or five dollars. Like they could afford that. Believe me when I tell you that. Believe me when I tell you that. So don't, don't you, I used that as an excuse at first and I was like, you know what? And I started seeing how they move and I started seeing how they do go out and drink sometimes by themselves. So like, that's what I'm saying. You could tell a lot by looking at a girl's stats as well. You see a girl that's been to a bunch of countries and she works as a waiter, guess what? somebody's paying for her trips that's what i'm telling you guys you, you could learn a lot by looking at these girls statuses their what's up by looking at their instagram and sometimes they, they have boyfriends so you have to be careful that with that as well don't believe everything they, like you said they tell you like you have to like you know watch out for what they say because i've had girls tell me oh, i don't have a boyfriend and then the friend tells me she does have a boyfriend and she so yeah be careful with that as well you have to like you know watch out for that like i said it takes time to meet you know good people here but you can't meet them and i think once you meet the good people that, that i know here it's good like i know i can hang out at a certain spot with certain people you know and also the girls that are busy hustling over here that have careers that have good jobs that have a car they're not going to leave their shit to go travel with you in mexico so you have to look at that as well if a girl's willing to leave her stuff and go with you anywhere in the world she doesn't have nothing going on for her so that's why this other guy the other youtuber was talking about you mess with bottom feeders and then you get mad because you know you get hurt and she, so yeah mess with the girls that have careers there's girls here that are police officers that are beautiful lawyers accountants teachers nurses etc beautiful women here that have careers man and you could meet them and shit you know but stop going for like the younger girls and go for the older ones they still look good and shit you know and so I hope that you get something from this video. I hope that it wasn't too long, but I'm gonna try to get those opinions from those local men. So it's always better to hear from the local men, just, you know, 
And also, I'm gonna get some girls to talk on the camera too, to ask them like, what do you think about gringos? Like, what should they watch out for? Because I've had home girls that tell me the girls here are very interesting. So I think it's very better to hear a girl say, oh yeah, some of the girls here might be gold diggers or whatever. So you hear it from a local, it puts you on alert, you know? Like I said, I hope you liked the video. I hope you got something from it. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment if you have a question or leave a comment if you think that you agree with me or you disagree with me. Or maybe you've seen something that's different that I haven't seen. And until next time, guys, take care.